when I was developing the energy credits and I was thinking about it, I started, okay, actually there is something wrong with what we are doing. We actually, we cannot repay in energetic terms what we are accumulating in terms of debt. Right? It, it, there is not enough resources to do it. And that, that's actually, that was a revelation. Our society has grown in the past 300 years, basically, with the effective impression that energy is unlimited. Right? We're keeping it going just because we have a, a debt system that cannot see the reality right now. I mean, essentially, we're not facing the reality of that limitation because we think we can actually repay that debt in the next 20 years. But the reality is that in the next 20 years, the amount of energy that we will have available will not be enough for us to actually repay our debts. Right? And in order to get renewable forms of energy, you need to invest up front. I mean, we all know that essentially, the, once you install the photovoltaic panels or the wind turbines, they basically operate with limited amount of maintenance needed over their lifetime. 30 years, that, that is a usual expected lifetime for these type of systems. But that means that up in the upfront investment, which is both money but also energy, needs to be made now, right? If we don't make that upfront investment and we continue burning our fossil fuels, eventually we will be at a point what I call the energy trap. Essentially, we will not have enough spare energy from our activities day to day to actually build enough renewable energy capacity to, to get us through to the next phase. So that's something that I, I think an energy currency can avoid, can ease basically that transition. I don't think that an energy currency will suddenly come about on a global scale. I think the first step of an energy currency would be any region or municipality or city, like Mazdar City, that realizes that uh, or decides to have a strong energy target. It could be a city in the, in the covenant of mayors in the European Union or a country in the European Union that says I want to have 50% renewables by X. That creates a hard energy target. So the way that it would work at, at this first level, it would work as a, as a parallel currency. So you would have your normal euros, dollars, whatever it is, currency, plus the energy credits. In, in this concept, we can, we can, I call them ergos from the Greek word for work. And the idea would be that essentially you create a subscription system where users of energy, where ergos basically are created exactly reflecting the amount of energy that is available in the city, like or for the system. Now this can be distributed across the users. And a key point of the ergo system is that you would actually have the ergos with an expiration date. The ergos are something that is destroyed at the moment, moment that is used. So basically you have to surrender it, right? So it's not something that so, you... So you can trade them? You can trade them, but, but once, once you use, you use them, them, they expire. They expire. Now, somehow you need to finance it and build it. Now, how can you do that? One way is to actually issue what we call futures, ergo futures. Now, these futures would represent energy that would come in at a given point in time. So essentially, before they are active, so all futures would be actually active at a date. Now, before they are active, they, at that point, they can be speculatively traded. So an, an issuer says, I have a plan to build a plant that will generate energy at this rate. So I'm issuing these ergo futures. And then people can actually exchange between them. Now, these become an equivalent now to dollars or to whatever currency that we have today. Because right now, they, 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 until their activation, they can be essentially exchanged without any problem. So essentially, the issue of the currency is any entity that is within the system that has the ability to generate energy or store energy. Of course, the argument would be, but actually you cannot measure everything with energy, right? Of course, I mean, there is a, a beautiful painting, right? Or, and people actually value these things, but there can still be an equivalency in the following sense that, okay, I'm, I have, for whatever reason, I have built this very big photovoltaic plant or whatever it is, right? I'm an investor. Or, 
and I have done this, and then I actually don't need all the energy that I'm getting as a result. I'm willing to actually forfeit that and get for a lot more energy than it actually costs to make whatever product it is that I consider of high value. So you still have that higher value add added for whatever someone is willing to pay, right? So it, that, that doesn't mean that the cost and the price are equivalent. I, I think that the financial system is a problem, right? And we really need to address it. Uh, but the, the biggest problem, of course, is climate change. And I think in my, the way that I view it, also the energy sustainability. So if we want to avoid a lot of pain in the near term future by a lot of people, then we really need to, to do things. The, the question is how to transition, not just physically, but also organizationally. And that, that's, I think, the, the hardest part in the end.